I'm going to talk about the, the DARA project, the developments in Africa with radio astronomy project, and more specifically the, the DARA big data um, project. Um, this is a, a, a human capital development project that is co-funded by the, the UK government Newton Fund and the South African Department of Science and Technology um, through delivery partners um, in those countries. However, it's a project that actually addresses um, the needs of uh, not the UK or South Africa, but the needs of the SKA Africa partnership. So that's the, the countries uh, Botswana, Ghana, Kenya, uh, Madagascar, Mauritius, Namibia, and Zambia. Um, uh, the, the project itself, the original DARA project, which I don't need, that's led by um, Professor Melvin Hoare from the University of Leeds, um, was set up to support the development um, of research communities across the SKA Africa partner countries so that they could meaningfully uh, participate in the scientific impact of the SKA telescope um, when it came online. Um, and that project has now trained several hundred students at an undergraduate level in radio astronomy and astronomy basic training, um, and also several dozen students at a graduate level. Um, and you can see a, um, a quote here from, from Naomi, who's one of the, the DARA PhD students who's just completed her PhD um, at the University of Manchester. However, um, as Phil already mentioned, um, the SKA is, is far more than just an astronomy project. Um, and specifically, um, for the purpose of this talk, it is a, a big data machine. Um, in fact, the, the big data challenge of the SKA is so large that IBM refers to the SKA as extreme data um, rather than big data. Um, this is how the, um, the data volumes produced by the SKA um, compare to perhaps commercial data volumes, other large scientific experiments. But I should say that these are only the primary data products. Um, and in fact, over the first few years of full operations, the SKA will be producing exascale data volumes. So it really is a, a driver for big data development. Um, and when I say big data, Big data is a, it's a multifaceted thing. So it, it, it not only, it not only um, involves the, the production of large volumes of data, it also includes scientific computing, data science, machine learning, AI, statistics, all these different aspects. Um, and these are the same aspects that are covered by the industries who are participating in the fourth industrial revolution. Um, so the, the data challenge of the SKA is very important for driving um, the elements of the fourth industrial revolution from a scientific perspective. Now, as we all know, um, 4IR is, is a huge global economy, but it's also a challenge because it presents the prospect of a widening economic gap between developed and developing countries um, in terms of how those countries can participate within the fourth industrial revolution. And um, purely on the AI side of the fourth industrial revolution, McKinsey estimate that gap could grow to an additional 10 to 15 percent between developed and developing countries. Now, obviously, that's an issue for many of the countries in the SKA Africa partnership. And so the DARA Big Data program was developed to um, address the big data aspects of the SKA project from a human capital development perspective. Um, and to really exploit the huge data volumes and the processing challenges um, in, a, in a very translational way. So um, Phil has already spoken about the, the SKA as a, being a beacon of inspiration. We know from um, other, um, other aspects in different countries that astronomy is a, is a subject that draws young people into science. Um, and one, within astronomy, those statistical aspects, the data analytics and the big data computers, computing are horizontals that extend beyond astronomy and into other fields. So the, the, one of the driving objectives of the DARA Big Data Project is to use radio astronomy as an enabler to translate um, skills into other areas. Now, obviously, there are some areas that are, that are more relevant than others for the countries of the SKA Africa Partnership. Um, and I have to say that the, the people who are perhaps most keenly aware of this are our own students um, who 
noted the, the parallels between the work that they were um, doing as part of their DARA basic training and different elements of economically relevant um, uh, industry. And specifically, um, the DARA Big Data Project targets three areas, um, and these are chosen strategically, they're not, uh, they're not randomly selected. Um, and these are astronomy big data, capitalizing on the, the SKA, health big data, and agriculture big data. Now, the reason that these were chosen is because of the similarities in how the data analytics is done. So there's significant areas, not only of um, cross-disciplinary work, but also translational impact that can be achieved in these three areas. So just to give you a, a quick example of that, for the SKA, and in fact, even the precursor telescopes to the SKA, um, the observing of the sky is going to detect tens to hundreds of millions of astronomical objects. And all of those objects need to be identified, located, and catalogued. And that's a task that's going to require significant um, AI to do what are fundamentally quite basic tasks in astronomy at scale. Now, the algorithms that are used for um, multispectral imaging in astronomy are actually very similar to those that are used for Earth observation in agriculture. And there are significant parallels in the way that the data are handled and analyzed. And so these algorithms can be exploited between fields, basically turning, turning the telescope upside down to look at the Earth and to address issues um, such as sustainable agriculture and maximizing crop yields. The other field is um, medical imaging. Um, and historically, there's been significant overlap between radio astronomy and medical imaging. Um, because the, the way in which the data are acquired in medical imaging is very similar to the way that the data are acquired in radio interferometry. Um, and historically, algorithms from radio astronomy have been used extensively um, in, in medical imaging, specifically in, in things like MRI imaging. And because of the similarities between the data sets, it's also an excellent area for cross exploitation of machine learning and analytics. Um, between medical images and astronomical images. And um, just to give you a, a very nice um, example down here at the bottom, what you're looking at here is a, a chest CT scan. Um, and the images at the bottom, one is a, an aortic calcification, which is a, a comorbidity associated with lung cancer. And the other one is a gravitational lens from an astronomical image. And the aim of an algorithm to detect either of these things um, can be set up in a very similar way because of the, the structural similarities in the data sets and the morphological similarities in the, in the uh, targets themselves. So the, the mapping between health big data and agri big data onto the sustainable development goals is, is perhaps somewhat obvious and, and perhaps and maybe I don't need to point it out here, but obviously these, these two areas directly address um, the goals of good health and well-being and zero hunger. But when you put them into a combination with astronomy data, you actually hit a whole bunch of other um, SDGs, including quality education, decent, decent work and economic growth, and industry and innovation, which I think Carla is also going to talk about um, after me. Um, so this is a program that, that aims to exploit translation between different connected areas in order to achieve um, a goal that is greater than the sum of its parts. Um, and all of this comes together, of course, to address that goal of reduced inequalities. So now that I've hopefully motivated the program for you, um, I'll talk a little bit about what we, what we do day to day. Um, so unlike the original DARA program, um, the DARA Big Data program focuses primarily on postgraduate um, education um, in, an, in our three target areas. Um, and we do this through the provision of bursaries for postgraduate research programs, but also through training programs. Um, and these tend to be targeted around the different SKA Africa partner countries. So here are some photographs from some of our our workshops um, and hackathons in Botswana, in Madagascar, in South Africa. 
Um, and as well as these smaller, um, more general workshops, we also run a flagship um, Big Data Africa School. Um, this is an annual event. And this is the, these are the participants from the third Big Data Africa School. This was uh, uh, last year uh, held in Cape Town, if you, if you don't recognize the mountain in the background. Um, and we had participants from all of the SKA Africa partner countries. Uh, the school is highly oversubscribed, it is selective, it is perfectly gender balanced, which is, um, I like to claim as a, um, you know, a, a, an achievement of the program, but, but due to the oversubscription rates, it's actually quite, quite easy to, to, to gender balance these events. Um, one of the things that we're most proud of with the Big Data Africa School is that we've now reached a point in the the lifetime of the program, where in fact the instructors at the school are our more senior students who have already been through the program. Um, so the school is based heavily around project work. The students are broken up into groups and they work on projects using real data from astronomy, agriculture and, and medicine. Um, they have interaction with industry, um, which is what you can see in the top left here. They have entrepreneurship workshops, they have communication skills workshops, and they have their applied projects. Um, and you can see in the top right here, this is um, Edward Salakpi um, from Kenya, who is, uh, sorry, from Ghana, who's working on data from Kenya um, on agricultural drought, and recently published a paper that's uh, been taken up by the Kenyan government for predicting agricultural drought using um, uh, algorithms from astronomy. Um, and he led the agriculture project at last year's Big Data Africa School. One of the other um, important aspects of our training programs is that they create a network um, of researchers across the SKA Africa countries. Um, and again, one of our aims is to promote South-South collaboration um, within, within that network. Um, our targeted events in individual countries have started to become so large. This is a, a picture from um, a hackathon we ran at the Namibia University of Science and Technology last year that we've actually now formed a strategic partnership between the Dara Big Data Project, um, the Office of Astronomy for Development and the Inter-University Institute for Data Intensive Astronomy in South Africa, which provides the um, Alifu cloud resource um, that can be used by all of the partner institutes in the, um, the DARA network. Um, and this partnership is now providing hackathons um, virtually. Um, and in fact, we have a virtual hackathon running tomorrow at the University of Zambia. Um, we're very excited about. Um, the other um, thing we've been doing is engaging with data focused organizations across Africa. Um, so this is a partnership between the, the CoData Alliance and the Center for High Performance Computing in South Africa to provide um, bursaries for students to attend CoData events and also to provide trainers at uh, training workshops associated with those events. And you can see some of our trainers and some of our participants here. Um, the final note I wanted to end on was um, an aspect of the program which I think is becoming increasingly important, and William has been mentioning the, the importance of, of uh, science diplomacy, um, which is the, the elements of scientific communication that help to develop data-informed policy. And I think everyone is very aware of the importance of this kind of science communication, um, given the current uh, coronavirus pandemic. Um, the Dara Big Data program started um, a science communication training um, program as a sort of a initially as a, a side project um, to give training in science communication for policy engagement to early career researchers from across the SKA Africa partnership. Um, this was our first cohort um, of Dara Big Data Policy Fellows who um, undertook the training program and then ran um, a panel discussion at Science Forum South Africa um, in collaboration with the IAU and the Foreign and Com Commonwealth Office um, on 
how science communication for policy engagement differs from that of public engagement and how we can train researchers in these areas. Um, we developed this also into a lecture series, which we named for, for Dr. Bernie Fanneroff, um, who, who of course advocated for the SKA and the Meerkat telescope in South Africa, not just as scientific endeavors, but also as tools of economic development. Um, and I think anyone who knows Bernie will, will say that Bernie understands the, the importance of science for, for policy um, very keenly. So our first lecture was given by Dr. Rod, Rob Adam, head of uh, Soreo in South Africa. And our second lecture um, at the beginning of this year, just before lockdown, um, was given by uh, Dr. Margaret Guelcelaire, who's um, an expert in science diplomacy. Um, some of you may know Marga from her work on the landmark cooperation agreement between the Cuban Academy of Sciences and the American Association for the Advancement of Science um, after the, the resumption of diplomatic um, communication between those two countries. Um, and these lectures have been not only extremely popular, um, we run them as public lectures, um, but they've also encouraged the students within the DARA and DARA Big Data projects to get more involved in science diplomacy and policy um, development. And we're seeing not only engagement directly with government, as for Edward's work, but also um, degrees of engagement with the, the World Academy of Science and also the Young Global Academy, um, which I think is, is very important for these students. Um, so I will end there. Thank you very much for listening to me. Um, if you'd like any further information about the DARA Big Data Project, please visit our website or follow us on Twitter. You can also find, find profiles of our postgraduate students there and more information on our events. Thank you very much, Anna, for, for that, that very rich and informative uh, presentation. Um, certainly highlighting that the SKA project and radio astronomy is not only about better understanding the secrets of the universe, but it's also all about investing in people. And then certainly that's one of the reasons South Africa has chosen radio astronomy as a priority investment because it's investment in the skills and in the talent uh, we need for the future. And I sh should also highlight that the DARA project is an excellent example of, of science diplomacy and North-South collaboration. And one should acknowledge the contribution of the UK government um, through the Newton Fund to this very special program.